that shit crack. Peace, 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 family. How you all doing? I hope all is well with you. My name is Keisha. I'm the owner of Ascendant Astrology, and I am your astrology coach. Today, I'm going to be talking about 3D versus 5D, spirituality versus practical spirituality, just using the transit of uh, Saturn and Pisces. We're going to incorporate a little bit of Jupiter uh, and Taurus energy or just Taurus energy in general, just to show where we kind of lean on the rest of that uh, 3D energy and how that's really supporting us right now or what's bringing us value and opportunities. But for the most part, I wanted to come in and have this conversation because I think it's going to be something that's going to come up a lot right now. And so... Um, I did do, I have been talking about it in the last few videos quite vaguely. I did do a video on my IG called the 13th sign. And I broke that down, um, from the origin, uh, the, um, archetype of the 13th sign. I really, really, really suggest people to go check out that video that's going to help give you more insights to this um, conversation that we're having that we're going to have that I'm pretty sure is going to come up a lot more but before I jump into the topic I really just wanted to let people know I'm not having this conversation to have a debate as opposed to whether or not 3D or 5D is valid or invalid. I really want to have this conversation in a way to say, how do we bring the two together, right? Um, because I think what's happening or what happens a lot between the spiritual community and the everyday working people is that there's a disconnect between whether or not they're spiritual because they're in the 3D. Um, most spiritual people would consider 3D people as not true spiritual people. And so, again, if you go back to my video I did on IG, I talked about how my coach, my teacher, my esoteric teacher, the woman that I took the classes with, for you guys on here who've been following me a lot longer, I've talked about her a few different times on um, how she's a real witch. You know, she's really about that life. And I laugh when I say that, but I want to make it very, very clear that I know she manifested in my life at a time where I was going through something extremely tough. And it was a bad uh, custody battle I was going through with my oldest son's father. And I didn't get a chance to see my son for that five years because he kept him from me. And so we were disconnected and it painfully, like dreadfully hurt me to a point where I, there were days where I thought I wasn't going to be able to breathe. Like when I tell you dark night of the soul, just kind of like, <laughs> it was like, <laughs> like a real good, mm, to the, ooh, it hurt, right? It really, really hurt. And I was going through a lot and I was trying to understand like, why is something like this happening to me? And at that point in my life, I had already kind of been through school. Um, I think I was in the middle of my college education. I had already had some counseling for quite some time at this point in my life. Um, and, uh, I still felt empty, like the counseling that I was getting, I felt like it wasn't enough. What I wasn't at that time, um, was an astrologer. I wasn't doing astrology just quite yet. Um, I actually think at that time I was just newly, um, pregnant with Amir. So Amir six is about six years ago. Right. And so, um, um, I think 
the first day I went to go see, so I did some, I did some research in my, in my time of duress. I was looking for real solid help. Like I, I wanted answers. I was like, I need answers now. <laughs> and so I did some research and I found her on a website on, on Google uh, that she was a counselor, but through some kind of esoteric knowledge. It wasn't very specific, but she was black and she had locks. And I was like, you know what? That's what I'm looking for. I was very determined to find somebody who looked like me, who might be able to give me more insight as to what it was I was going through. And so um, I, um, I called her, I had my first meeting and I promise you, when I got now her 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 school is her house, which I thought was really kind of freaking cool. But um, when I first uh, went there, our first session, we didn't even get fifteen minutes into the session as as we started. She started like asking me some questions. It was like the first initial meeting, so she was gathering a lot of information from me, and I just like broke down in tears, like the whole book of snots. It was. I was, I was, <laughs> I was an emotional mess, right? And she was like, okay, 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 okay. Don't cry, don't cry, don't cry. She kept saying that, don't cry, don't cry. And uh, I finally like calmed down and she was like, I have a class. You can take the class. She started to explain it to me very briefly, how it goes down in the process, et cetera. Um, and then we went downstairs and she went to her, she, she left me at her door. She was like, wait right here. Don't go nowhere. I was like, okay. Um, she went downstairs to her basement. She was down there maybe 10, 15 minutes. It wasn't really that long. And she came back up and she said, okay, don't forget to go to the class, to come to the class. This is the date. Make sure you get the book. I had to go online to get her book, the book for the class. And, and I left. I want to say about three months later, um, my son called me out of the blue. I can't really remember what it was, but that that was the first time that I seen my son since I hadn't seen him when all this stuff started happening. And I just knew without a shadow of a doubt that it had some, she went down in that basement and did something. And he came and she kept asking me too why, when I was in the class. She's like, Did your son contact you yet? Have you seen him yet? And I was like, No, you know. <laughs> Every time I thought about him, it was kind of a sore spot, you know. And uh, she's like, Don't worry, he's he'll come around. Don't worry about it. everything's gonna be okay. And I was like, Okay. And he he did. He reached out to me. We talked. Um, I think the first initial conversation was brief, but then I told him about, you know, this event that we had, it's called the Car Restmas Celebration. You guys should go look that up. It's K-R-E-S-T Celebration. Um, it's the true celebration of Christmas. And um, again, if you go back to my video I did on IG, you'll understand why this is re this is super important because everything we did in that class was to undo in the three D what we have been learned and uh, what we have been taught and kind of um, you know um, conditioned to separate us from our beliefs and our spiritual practices, right? And so my son got to come with me. I wish I had I, I wish I had pictures um to to further talk about that expense to show you guys what it was because it's very it's very in it's very, very, very in depth. I'm not even touching it with a uh enough detail, but um my son got to go to that celebration with me. I wanted her to see that I did get in contact with him. He came and she, you know, she shook his hand and gave him a hug and welcomed him and um, told him that he should come to the class too. And, you know, he was interested, you know, kids are, he was like, you know, like he was understanding, but unsure, but like, I'll do it. <laughs> and, um, and then that was it. I didn't see him again until... I want to say 2018, 2019, 
by this time I had actually become an astrologer. I was, I was actually taking a class. I think maybe I did graduate at that point. I was, I was doing videos, but I was still like new to it. And so I don't think I was doing them publicly. I didn't start publicly at first. I just started doing videos. If you scroll down on my other YouTube page to the way, way beginning, you can, you can tell I was new at this. Those videos are absolutely horrendous, <laughs> right? And so I'm saying all this to say um, Saturn and Pisces, we really have to learn and understand what this transit is really all about and if we keep separating ourselves from the spiritual community to the people doing the work in the 3d we're missing the message and so we have to be able to come together to see how these energies are one everything is connected nothing is separated right and so um saturn and neptune will be in Pisces until 2026. So you want to check out where you have your um, uh, Pisces area of life in your chart. There's going to be a lot of interesting life changes going on in that area of your life. Um, Saturn is connected to the 3D, what we have to take care of, our commitments, our responsibilities, our maturity, and how we handle the real world. Because Saturn rules Capricorn, it also rules Aquarius, which is an even more interesting conversation to have. Um, 2026, coming to you soon, okay? <laughs> um, but because it's the ruler of Saturn, Saturn is an earth sign. It's extremely important to understand that earth signs manifest here in the 3d it's something that you get physical that you can touch see feel you know this is the 3d it's not just about the world or working in the world it's the laptop it's a blanket it's these shirts it's this jewelry you know here in the 3d okay your physical body even although you know most people will say it's more related to tourists that physical body is more related to the Taurus sign, but you get what I mean, right? And um, as this transit unfolds, you're understanding what you're learning, what you're healing, how you're growing. You may have to clear out some things in your physical world. So what is clearing out some things in your physical world? It depends. It's going to show up for people in different ways, but this could be your thinking, how you're thinking about the physical world, like what I'm talking about right now and the importance to understand how they are one. This can be literally like clearing out your closet or a detox in your body. Um, and this can be moving. Um, um, changing jobs getting a new car, maybe your car is done. It's essentially a cycle around something, wherever this is happening for in your chart is ending. Um, and then there's a new cycle starting, coming in. And that's where you look at Taurus to see what that new cycle is, right? And so you might have to make some mature, tough decisions. Oh, and it can be people, right? It could be literal people that you have to let go of. Um, and Saturn holds us accountable, but Pisces is denying or procrastinating, letting go of what you have, um, graduated from or pushing something away because you don't want to see it. You're not ready to accept it. Like, um, when I thought about this and there's so many different examples that I can give around this. In fact, I might do that. Um, when I first thought about this, as I was taking the notes down from this transit, the first thing that came to mind was um, the last airbender, the movie, when he was in, when he was locked in that ice, think about this, just take a minute to hear me out and really think about what I'm saying right now. He was locked in that ice, what is some, something like 2000 years? I don't know. I could have that number wrong, but it was a really long time. Because when he was being given, when they realized that he was 
um, you know, the airbender, he was the one who was to take the air to the throne or, uh, you know, be the one who's, you know, going to bring everybody together. He was upset because what he realized, pay attention now, is that he can never have a relationship. This is all 3D stuff, right? And he didn't understand or, or have a family. And he didn't understand why he wasn't going to be able to do that. And emotionally, he shut down. Look at Pisces is denying, procrastinating, um, not letting go of what you've graduated from, right? He was being given a graduation, a, 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 a sign of um, uh, passing down the baton, uh, a, a coming of age, if you will, right? Essentially, these are things that we experience here on the 3D level, but when we deny them and we don't accept them, then we get locked in. Now, it could be a mental prison, which is also Pisces energy. It could be like Scorpio energy, which is like the dark night of the soul, having to go within, deal with your emotions, um, a lack of clarity, direction, fear. Um, I mean, I can go on and on and on. This can be drug addictions, um, you know, uh, a lackluster, unrealistic um, ideologies about life, um, very naive. And, um, and, um, uh, not vulnerable. Vulnerable is not the right word I'm looking for here. Um, but, uh, naive, you know, just, just naive. Right. And so, you know, this is what they do. Right. And I think Hollywood and these movies are the best ways to explain how the 3D and the 5D come together because they are getting these messages from our spiritual practices as above. Right. Our knowledge and wisdom. Right. And they're taking that information and all the the um, knowledge and wisdom through our books and studying us. And they're putting our stories in these movies, which is all Pisces right? Pisces rules the imagination in Hollywood. And um, and they tell our stories the way that they want to tell them, right? But we have to be able as the people to Saturn, look at it realistically and be notice that you, that's you in that movie. This is your life. These are things that you've actually gone through. You are the airbender, Right. And so we have certain cycles and things that we go through in our life where we're experiencing these downfalls or, um, you know, times of duress or stress. Like I was talking about telling my personal story where, you know, you could feel stuck, lost. It's very, very painful, especially Pisces. Scorpio is bad. Scorpio is bad. But Scorpio, I think, is a little bit stronger because they're built to be alone. They they can do this not and not feel no pain. But Pisces is a is a water sign. I mean, Scorpio is a water sign too. They're a lot more emotional and compassionate, naive, naive. It's like a young child that doesn't understand why they can't play all day with their favorite toy, kind of sorta, you know. And uh, they're a lot more sensitive, right? And so um, when I think about it from, from that perspective, it's like, um, it's, ext it's extremely painful. It can feel like the world is like coming down on you, crushing you, and you can't move. It's like you're stuck, right? Uh, like between a rock and a hard place, quite literally. Uh, um, it could feel that way, but figuratively as well, you know, to the point where you don't make moves, you don't set goals, you feel like you have no place in this world, you don't fit in. Everything that you do and want, people are consistently criticizing you, downsizing you, talking about you. They don't see your vision, right? And um, how, how is that not relative to being in the 3D working at a fucking nine to five job? If that is not these two energies together, I don't know what is right. And so, you know, um, 
I think we have to understand the two come together when we have this conversation as opposed to saying, well, my way is better or my way is better. They both are always simultaneously working together. Now, what might happen to somebody is that some people are more spiritual and some people are more um, in the 3D but that doesn't mean that they're not spiritual, right? They just know how to manipulate. They are the airbender, right? They've accepted the challenge that you are the, the one that's going to lead us to bringing everybody together. And that's the real, that's that Aquarius energy, right? That's the other side of Saturn is sovereignty, um, you know, self uh, actual um actualization um you know really stepping into your power and your authentic self and who you are right and that's where the spiritual people are already at for the most part so these people will have their own jobs they listen to their um subconscious they understand signs and symbols um you know they're comfortable there they've mastered that energy and so they're just as successful doing what they do having their own businesses living their life freely not being confined to a nine to five or a schedule or somebody consistently you know over your head like hey 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 you know stifling your inner light right but the thing that I want, to, uh, two things that I want to distinguish with this is looking at my teacher, who was very spiritual, obviously, right? She still worked in an in Northeastern University. She had a nine to five job. She worked in the African studies for years. For years. The question we really need to begin to ask ourselves is why is that? What is she getting out of that? You understand what I'm saying? And I'm pretty sure if we sat down and had a conversation with her, what, what we will begin to realize is that the we need people to build these businesses, these light, the light and gifts within us. We need each other to come together to do that. So sim simultaneously, we need to be able to work together, right? And um the same thing can be said with a person who's a lot more spiritual. They have their own business. Um, they're doing what they, they're using their light and not confined to a nine to five. They're essentially set free, but they are still struggling. Why is that? Because they don't have capital and whether you like it or not, yeah, you can say money is not everything and it's not, but when you're working through your light, money is isn't even everything you still get money from what from the light using your light right so it's now energetic and we know that money is energy who cares what the 3d explanation is right that's helping you pay your bills so that you can live another way to look at that is that we need to be able to especially now so look at it from this perspective Money has nothing to do with this. But if we were just building, say the 3D didn't exist, this was our land and this is us building as a people together to have services and things that can help us for the things that we need to live every day, right? So having that conversation from that perspective, that we would still have to be working together with each other to build something in the 3D to work. Um, out of or from, if you will, right? And so when, when you're thinking about it from that perspective, you would still have jobs. I like to look at Black Wall Street specifically because I think they did this the best. Um, they had businesses, they had their own towns, they had their own movie theaters, they had everything that we have right now in the 3D that we don't want to associate with because it's deemed tainted from working within that system to to get out which is unfortunate uh but that is the way to do it not because it's the right way but because look at us now we are living in a country where we don't own anything we don't have places and spaces where we can go and if you're hiding away how are people going to find you there are people out there who need those services and you need their resources, their energetic 
uh, payout. You know what I'm saying? And so we have to change the way we are thinking about this process in a way that is now with, especially once Pluto goes back into Capricorn, which will be this month, uh, this month, June the 11th, which this month is June is tomorrow, <laughs> right? Pluto is going to retrograde back into Capricorn. Now we've had Capricorn, a uh, Pluto and Capricorn since 2008. It's been the destruction of the 3D. That's what this is. Capricorn's ruled by Saturn too. So Saturn is hard at work, right? And as these systems are falling and crumbling, Again, it's up, up to us, the people, to be right there to build in the spaces and places to replace those systems with better outcomes, smarter systems, more self-sufficient, more healthy. I mean, just go back to 2020 and think about what it was when you were learning at that time. It's like, oh my God, I get to be at home with my family and still have a job. So more... Um, flexible jobs now where people get the option to work from home. We can already see that manifesting in real time, right? More options like that. Um, I think we're going to see those things grow when Pluto goes back into Capricorn. I think we're going to see more falling of layoffs and companies and businesses. I think, um, more people are going to be forced to start their own businesses and work from home. Um, and uh, it's going to force a lot more of the Black people who have already established themselves in their own business to come together to help people bring the services. And that's going to be the bigger picture that, you know, we're not seeing because we're too busy fighting against each other instead of coming together, if, if essentially, right? And so, again, um, Saturn holds us accountable, you know? Um, and this can show up as decisions that need to be made, but you don't know what, what to do, which means that you need to work with somebody. You need to make sure that you go see a guru, work with people who look like you, support their businesses, stop doing businesses, with these places and spaces who don't care about you. There needs to be a shift in that, right? Saturn also requires us to look at our karma. Um, you know, making sure you're paying uh, gratitude to the things that you've been through, healing through those things, being honest about your healing, accepting your healing and continuing to follow your um, light in this world, right? And Neptune is more about the 5D. It's what we're feeling and sensing, what's outside of our control, what's bigger than us that we have to surrender to and the parts we don't always see clearly, but we feel or sense very deeply. And it's, a, it's, a, it's intuition, you know? Neptune can be feeling overwhelmed and not knowing what to do. If you feel confused, lost, or don't know what the, solu the solution is, ask Saturn. You're, you're going to want to look at Saturn. Where's your personal Saturn in your chart? Where is Saturn now and how are those two communicating, right? Neptune has been in Pisces since 2011. Now Saturn is highlighting that area that Neptune has already covered. So Saturn can be about making some new choices and decisions to be very realistic about um, with yourself, which you can truly handle. What do you want? What are you choosing? Is it working or not, right? Saturn is also about systems and structures. Again, so having a business set up in such a way where I've been talking about this, where we're stifled right now, even if you do have your own business, whether you're stifled through finances or you're stifled through expansion so that it doesn't still feel like a nine to five, either way, you're still stuck. And so we have to break through that barrier, only way we are going to do that is if we come together just period that's that's the biggest thing to remember in this whole entire conversation we have to come back and connect with each other um have these bigger conversations 
get services. I talked about that. Work with the people who look like you. Stop buying and spending your money with people, places, and things that have at, that don't do nothing for your community, nothing for your household, nothing for your family, nothing for your legacy. You know, we really need to put it into that whole reality. And so, um, mm -mm -mm. I don't remember where I left off. So yeah, new choices and decisions to be very realistic with yourself and what you can truly handle. What do you want? What are you choosing? And is it working or not? And so there could be a lot of reflection um, during this transit around these ideas. Typically, Saturn's going to show you what's not working. So I talk about this whenever I do a... a um, when I first do a transit, I'll talk about how it's always going to show up in the negative to show you what you need to work more on, right? Not to, it's not working against you. It's working for you. So healing is going to be also a really big thing so that we're not looking at it as if we are being judged. Nobody wants to help us. We're not being heard and things of that nature, right? And so. And then we come to the solutions once we accept, oh, okay, this is a message. What is this trying to show me? So this area is going through more changes, more things leaving. Um, essentially, we will be able to manage expectations, understanding this is a process and preparing you for the new beginning when both planets move into Aries. That's in 2026. That's going to be a problem because what's happening also now during this time is that Aries will be in the North Node. What is this? 2023, 20, 24, 25. It'll just be moving into Pisces at the same time that this transit is moving into Aries. So it's almost as if the things kind of do a switcheroo. Um, but we're going to get to actually work with it. I think on a more spiritual level than I think any of us can ever even fathom right now. I think it's going to be really, really dope. What I like about Aries energy is that it's about taking accountability. It's about the self. It's about the individual that we're going to be like, yo, this whole time, I really needed to make these changes. I needed to set up boundaries. I needed to stay in my power. I need to stand firm in my authenticity. And once you do that, and the more you do that and you master that, Saturn gives you gifts, right? Saturn says, here, now I'm going to put these opportunities in front of you to work with this person and that person and that person and that person and bring, and you start to cultivate with others in a way that helps you build a new reality, a new system, a new structure with people of like mind, right? And I think that's going to be the most beautiful part of this transit. I'm probably going to keep talking about this because I think it's super important. But as usual, family, I love and appreciate you. I hope you find this information helpful. Peace.